What is the difference between a scar and a scab? If you see a scar in a wound, shall we leave it alone or shall we debride it? If we make the decision to debride, shall we do it now or shall we do it later? As long as you stay towards the end of this video, I can almost guarantee that you will learn something today. Watch this. This is a case of a 72-year-old male patient who sustained a third-degree burn after accidentally spilling a boiling coffee on, onto his thigh resulting to two distinct burn wounds. Prior to referral to wound care, he was under the care of his primary physician for almost four weeks. On the second week post-injury, he developed a scar on the wound in which he was started in oral antibiotic therapy. After the two-week course of antibiotic therapy, the redness did not resolve. The primary care provider ordered a culture which yielded no indication of local infection. Then the patient was referred to wound care for further management. Upon initial evaluation at the clinic, there is a presence of a scar with a fluctuance beneath the necrotic tissue and massive bright erythema around the peri wound. I immediately initiated sharp debridement as tolerated and sent patient home with instructions to cleanse with vas solution, apply salvasorb daily into the wound base, and then cover with non-adherent talfa dressing. One week after, the patient came back and there was a significant improvement with the resolution of the erythema on the peri wound. However, there was still a need to debride a reformed slough on the wound base. After another week, patient came back and the wound was completely resurfaced and was discharged from wound care. My analysis, the wound should have been referred earlier and the scar should have been debrided even when it was still a sta stable scar. The presence of a scar for weeks prior to referral has delayed the healing process. The location of the burn is in a well vascularized region of the body and the patient is not diabetic and does not have any known arterial compromise. So my philosophy of care is that service delayed is a service denied. However, I am happy that after all, the burn wound had resolved. So a scar is a sort of necrotic tissue that forms on deep wounds. It usually dry, black, and hard, and it adheres to the wound bed and edges. A scar can form on a full thickness wounds, which are lesions that extend beneath the epidermis and the dermis. A scar commonly form in conditions such as severe burns, pressure ulcers, or certain infections like Anthrax. A scab, on the other hand, refers to a harder crust that forms over a wound as part of the natural healing process. Scabs are typically reddish brown or brown in color and consists of dried blood, plasma, and dead skin cells. They develop when the blood clotting process occurs to protect the wound and allows new tissue growth, tissue growth underneath. Scabs usually fall off on their own once the underlying skin has fully healed. Escar, on the other hand, is generated when slough or other dead tissue debris dries out or harden from a full thickness wound. One of the distinguishing marks of these two terms or two tissues is the locations. When you are dealing here with a full thickness wound, uh, most likely that is and a scar. A scab, on the other hand, is usually found or formed in a superficial, superficial or a partial thickness wounds. Now, do we keep or remove a scar? That is the next question that we need to answer in this discussion. And I can tell you that except on some circumstances, the answer is yes, we have to debride. All necrotic tissue, including a scar, impede healing. 
it is then broadly recommended that eschar be debrided or removed and here is why eschar formation causes the growth factors to be inactivated and it slows down the formation of granulation tissue in the wound bed in a full thickness wound granulation tissue formation has to happen for healing to occur other reasons to remove eschar is that it physically obstruct and stunts epithelialization remember ladies and gentlemen that resurfacing uh, of a wound is <clears throat> if this is a full thickness wound uh, will be from the growth of epithelial tissue from the intact wound margins and you're gonna migrate towards the end and you're gonna meet at the center but if this is a partial thickness wound you don't need a granulation tissue formation you just need to re-epithelialize the wound in the wound would close now, in the presence of a scar on a full thickness wound, is there any situation when a scar removal is not indicated? That is the next question that we need to answer in this discussion. The answer is yes. Early debridement is not indicated in a stable scar. What is a stable scar? It is an scar that is dry, adherent, and intact without any signs of fluctuance. Later on, we're going to be talking about what is fluctuance. When this is present in the heel or in ischemic limb, then leave it alone. Due to the inherent decreased blood flow in the distal part of the body like the heel, the toes, especially when these patients are have circulatory compromise like they are diabetic. If diabetic people, they have decreased blood flow or impaired circulation because uh, especially if this is, has been a long-standing diabetic, there is uh, calcification of their small blood vessels that leads to the decreased blood flow so some experts argue to leave the escar in place in this situation the idea of the risk between or weighing the risk between the benefits applies to these situations what is unstable escar an unstable escar is a loose from the underlying tissue and has a boggy boggy feel to it and has underlying exudates or uh, surrounding cellulitis. If you are looking at an escar and uh, when you see that the escar is cracked and when you palpate it, you feel it, you, you feel it boggy and soupy and you look around and there's redness and there's edema and whatnot and there are also some sort of drainage coming out and that's, that's what we call and an unstable scar. The topic of escar debridement is a bit controversial, ladies and gentlemen. Some physicians and surgeons believe that you should debride escar in order to get rid of the necrotic tissue regardless of whether the escar is stable or, or not stable. So just go ahead and take it out. What I'm trying to say is that this uh, another school of thought is that it's regardless if this scar is stable, uh, some uh, experts are saying that go ahead and remove it because you want to accelerate the healing process. In my practice or in my personal practice, the, uh, the, my, my protocol is to perform sharp debridement uh, of unstable escar and refrain from debriding stable escar. In my experience, debridement is typically necessary in neuropathic and pressure ulcerations. These two types of ulcerations typically present with necrotic or non-viable tissue. On the other hand, venous insufficiency and ischemic ulcerations typically do not require debridement. You know why? In a great majority of venous ulcers, there is no escar formation. You will see a yellow-green fibrinous foam that covers the underlying viable tissue, but this is merely the result of the exudates that dry out and cover the healthy underlying tissue. Some clinicians say leave this alone, but in my experience, since I do uh, wrapping a lot, uh, and when I and uh, when I do wrapping a leg, when I when I wrap a leg without removing slough on the wound base and removing the petalous tissue on the wound margins. This usually results to increased incidence of infection and cellulitis. Since I wrap the leg and leave it for five to seven days, I always make sure that the wound base is free of non-viable devitalized tissue. After mechanically debriding the wound <coughs> with, with, with other, uh, with other 
less painful means and I still see an adherent uh, tissues in the wound base then I usually go ahead and rest for my instrument and uh, deprate these devitalized tissues before I wrap it. This is what we call the serial conservative deprayment of non-viable tissue. The decision to debride or not to debride an ascar in a wound depends on several factors and should be made by a healthcare professional. Here are some considerations. Number one, underlying cause. Determining the underlying cause of the ascar is crucial. If it is a result of an injury, surgery, or ischemia, debridement may be necessary to promote healing. However, if it is a result of a surgical closure or a burn, the ascar may serve as a protective barrier and debridement may not be indicated or required so it all depends on the assessment of the treating clinician number two infection if there are signs of infection debridement may be necessary to remove infected tissue in cases of localized infection selective debridement of the affected area might be sufficient Number three, wound assessment. A thorough assessment of the wound is essential. Factors such as wound depth, tissue viability, and the presence of healthy granulation tissue should be considered. Number four, patient's health. Remember that there is a wound, but that wound is attached to a patient. So you always look at the overall picture of the patient do not just look at the hole in the person but look at the whole person so the patient's overall health and comorbidities such as diabetes or vascular disease play a role in the decision making process debridement may be more beneficial in patients with compromised healing abilities however be careful but if they have a very bad or very poor circulation that's gonna be a uh, very big thing for you to consider. Next is pain management. Debridement can be painful, so the patient's pain tolerance and ability to tolerate the procedure should be taken into account. Number six, what is the goal of the patient or what are the goals of care? The patient's goal and expectation for wound healing should guide the decision-making process. Some patients may prioritize wound closure while others may prefer palliative care to manage symptoms and maintain quality of life. Number seven, location and size. The location and size of the escar may influence the decision as scars on weight-bearing areas or those that impede functions may benefit from debridement. In summary, the decision to debride an escar should be individualized, taking into consideration the specific patient, wound characteristic, and clinical judgment. Consultation with a wound care specialist or healthcare provider is essential to make an informed decision about debridement. It's important to follow evidence-based wound care guidelines and consider the best interest of the patient.